Salutations indeed, faithful viewer. I am Russell T. Davis, the writer of this episode, and I'm with... I'm David Tennant, and I'm playing the Doctor. And I'm David Houghton, and I'm the visual effects supervisor. Dave's challenge for this commentary is never to use the words green screen. (laughs) (laughs) And let's see how far we get. (laughs) <laughs> That's it. Are the rest of us allowed to use it? <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the year five billion. Mm. A, a, a pioneer couple. Well, the, the, do you know that painting, American Gothic? Yeah. Um, that, I think Louise has literally recreated the clothes for that. I don't know why. I just thought that would work. I, it's like, I love, I'll talk a bit about this is all set in New New York and... I really based it on Mega City One, you know, in the Judge Dredd oh, yeah. uh, comics, because you know how mad that city is and eccentric and and full of odd little people with odd little habits. And all the cars in this story are, you know, they're full of like hippies and Chinese students and, na- and naked people and businessmen. That businessman, especially with his bowler hat, is like yeah, yeah. Max Normal, who used to be in Judge Dredd. Yeah. So that's the thinking. Hooray. So they were just odd. I like that. I like the barminess of that. I think this is one of our more barmy episodes, and I don't mean that... Uh, uh, that's far from a criticism. Off its head. Yeah, it is... Um, I think that's what the year five billion ones are for, really. They're yeah. Just, uh, you just go for it, really. Um, and also, I guess episodes one and two, in some ways, are quite traditional Doctor Who stories, mm. aren't they? You know, um, well, certainly, you is, know, yes, we but... start we start in modern day, and then we go back to Elizabethan England with, with an, an alien invasion, that all... And then this is... This is quite out of the ordinary for a Doctor Who story. I suppose, the way it's constructed and the, the... Do you know, they're, they're constructed in different ways and at their heart they're all the same. You know what I mean? It's <laughs> like... No, but they are. There's like there's a monster underneath them. And, and yeah, sure. so traditional but, in its way. Sure, but it feels different. Mm, yes. I, I think this feels unusual and, and, and... I think that's what you have to do is... Yeah. It, also, the mon- monster isn't a malevolent thing in this, is it? I mean, it's something that's... It's not affecting the story. No, it's, it's kind of just there. It's actually a victim yeah. Of, yeah. of it. I was writing a thing for Doctor Who magazine the other day. Where I was thought, I always imagined that. I was imagine. Do you know where it's from? It's like I was imagine because it's New York. I was thinking of New York and the stories of alligators in the sewers. Yeah, yeah. So I always imagined that the macro right. were in a big zoo, and then everyone died, and they sort of escaped mm. and went and lived down the bottom of the motorway where all the fumes were. Mm. How old were you when you imagined that? <laughs> just about a year ago. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm not giving away my age. <laughs> 21. Here's the Doctor enjoying a bit of a description of his home planet. Mm. We've got a bit of a relight in the TARDIS interior here, haven't we? It's, um... You see, you tried to be romantic, David. Yeah, but no. And Dave goes lighting. straight into a relight on the TARDIS <laughs> interior. Where's the romance in your soul, man? <laughs> it is relit. We've got less green. Mm. So less of that going on. But that's been something we've been moving towards gradually as well, I would say, isn't it? The relighting of the TARDIS console or Gallifrey? <laughs> <laughs> Both. <laughs> Both, indeed. Which Certainly, the, dis- the description of Gallifrey. Yes. Well, we named it at the Runaway Bride. Mm. And ever so slowly now we're finding out more and more about it. Yes, um, and um, I think we'll discover a bit more as we go on. We just might, you know. Yep. Um, I love the uh, I love the link to last week with a, with an uh, um, arrow in the door of the TARDIS. Yeah. Nice, that one. Um, and it's, 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 it is a series of learning more about the Doctor and mm. we discovered Gallifrey was first mentioned in The Runaway Bride. Well, it was first mentioned in the original series many years ago. And um, that theme music is now starting to fit Gallifrey a bit, isn't it? Mm. It's, it's, it's starting to become part of that. Anyway, blah, blah, blah. Enough of that. Where are we now? Cardiff City Centre somewhere? Uh, no, it's a, it's a little... Um... Uh, well, I don't know, remember what it was called, but it's a, it's an office block actually it's that an has block. that has a little um, really? that has a little kind of atrium in the middle of it, which we filled. Oh. So the 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 brick wall is is uh, belongs to that office building. I think it's an old it's an old warehouse or something that's been converted. So were people typing away all yeah, around yeah. you? <laughs> yeah, when you when we went out I, when we went out the. Uh, um, to the far end, uh, you, the people standing around having their cigarette break, really? just beyond that tarpaulin that's behind my head now, just be- beyond that. Oh, is, right. um, is that what the smoke is? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no, any effects needed. <laughs> I like these pharmacists. Yeah. Again, 2018. It's all In Brazil, that kind of thing. Brazil, all that yeah. sort of stuff. Yes, just bizarre and weird, and drugs being sold, but it's all legal and just. And accents, that's Gail Telfer Stevens. I love her. I think she's brilliant. Just Scottish accent. Makes you feel all bendy. Was that in the script? It makes you feel all bendy. Or were they improvising? She might have improvised that. Yeah. Do you allow improvised lines through? Only the pharmacists. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Pale woman. Ah. Oh. Beautiful eyed Lucy, isn't it? Lucy, Lucy Davenport. Yes. Um, lovely, something terribly tragic about her, isn't it? Yeah. I'd have to walk around saying, I played Pale Woman in Doctor Who. <laughs> <laughs> no effects yet, Dave. Nothing happening. No, I know. Quiet I'm day not. for you. <laughs> We like these days. Shoot through filming. No old, that's nothing. It's easy. Well, luckily, you wrote a scene at the beginning and a scene at the end like that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, it does heat up a bit for you. In a I minute, could talk. I'm never on that. I don't even know where you are. I'm going, really? That's an office block? <laughs> yeah, it's an office block. A converted warehouse. It's kind of towards the docks, isn't it? Towards the. It's not in the docks, but it's sort of around <sighs> that area. Oh, I can't even remember. Mm. This was months and months ago that mm. we shot this. And it works brilliant. What a design team. It works brilliantly. Yeah. And hard to find something. I remember, I didn't know where they chose in the end. I knew what it looked like, obviously. But um, to find somewhere that's brick and city century without traffic and people. And, yeah. Because, and, and, I mean, of course, the whole city is dead around them, you know. Because we yeah. did have early discussions saying, does it matter if there's a road nearby? You go, well, yes, it does. Kind of does. Everything is gone. And also, it's got to be enclosed, isn't it? Because we don't want to see too much of the city. The sky, yeah. that was the hard part that we took ages to, yes. It was, it's was... completely, I mean, there's a roof over that bit. All the rain effects are rain effects. There, there, there's, we weren't open to the sky there. Well, it was yes. kind of open to the sky. There was kind of holes. It was a weird little area, wasn't it? I mean, I, I mean, Good. It was a yeah. hole at either end. Yeah. yeah. It was weird, wasn't it? And this is, is, is in the same complex. It's sort of down a bit and round the corner. Mm. Because on this bit, they did shoot so you could see the sky. Yes. You were meant to see the car fly off at a completely different angle. And it ruined it. Um, because you're just going, actually, the whole story is spoiled. Yes, because they are meant to be in an undercity with... Because this open. bit was open. Where, where this yeah. car, well, they're now in the studio, of course. But where the, this bit was an open alleyway. But originally that took off and it flew yes, left, yes, didn't it, Dave? Yeah, and it yeah, went, yeah. and there was yes, the sky and everything. That's right. And we've had long conversations about, well, maybe it's the edge of the city by the water. And it, it spoiled it. Uh, just ruined it. Now, of course, there only ever was one car set. This is it, and it, you will see it redressed about 15 times. <laughs> Do you know, I wrote this thinking, well, I know we'll spend a fortune on the CGI, mm. on the motorway. And I thought, but the rest of it's cheap, isn't it? It's just cheap. And, of course, it's so expensive, because I, that's genuine. That car has got proper walls and yeah, is a big, yeah. solid beast. And then redressing it, because they're such a brilliant design department, they never take it easy. Yeah. I could have just thrown a rug over, thrown a throw. That's something. what you suggested, isn't it? I was, I was in the tone <laughs> meeting going, look, just put a white cross on the wall and it's a different car. No, 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 we have it's to redress it. thoroughly completely. every and time. Of course, they're so right. Cause they're they are so right, but it's very time-consuming. And I remember it be, being a real headache for our first assistant director who was trying to keep everything going smoothly and would realise that yes. we moved to another car and that's a 45-minute redress for the yes. set. Because also it's a very small space, so getting in and out of it um, with anything was tough. Yes. Um, and moving the camera in it was really tough, even though bits of it did fly out. Um, the basic walls, I think, were solid, if I remember rightly. I don't think any... Yeah, they, they could were. Take, they could take the front windscreen out mm. and you could take the bit at the back out. Um, yes, because that came out because yeah. it was collapsible. Yeah. But other than that, it was it was a tough thing to shoot in. And, Ooh, of course, we were in there for... Because, there's, you know, Days. it's a huge chunk of this episode. It was over a week, I think, we mm. shot... And as a director, I've said this is directed by Richard Clark, and um, who's done a brilliant job on it, I think. And um, mm. it must have driven him mad because as a director, you want to you want to do I like alleyway scenes and chases. Sure. That's brilliant. And a whole week stuck in a box. Well, it really limits your choices, I suppose, in terms of short <coughs> instruction and all that. But, it's um, close ups or mid close ups. Yeah, there's not, yeah. There's not a lot else you can. I mean, that's and do you remember the get. endless conversation in Tone Weeks about what's outside the windscreen? Yeah, which was a mm. which was just brilliantly solved by them being. Eventually, we remembered like the windows of Jack's spaceship in the Empty Child yeah, that were yeah. just there was just a glow outside. Very there. dirty, and weren't they? And sort of uh, quite. quite a bit. And what you do have is two two red lights on a stick. Yes, <laughs> literally being waved up and down by two of our um, sparks. <laughs> so you've got this idea that there are other cars through the mist somewhere, and that's just mm. to the to the uh, right of Lenora's head there. Yeah, there it is. Um, it they're just up being there. bobbing up and down. It's just big Clive. Uh, big Clive the Spark with two lights on the end of a stick. And uh, there's a bit of smoke outside. There's there. a bit of smoke. See, that was the hard thing. Like, and yellow lighting. Yes. But like um, making... So the car had to be smoke-proof. Mm. If, otherwise, that, that that was part of the nightmare. Oh, otherwise, the smoke would have gone... So it had to be seen. Do you remember that yeah, tone meeting? It went on for hours yeah, about yeah. how do we get a smoky outside with 
lights because we couldn't CGI them in all the time. Fish tanks and all sorts of fish things. Fish tanks <laughs> and, and making the car smoke free and like, oh, it was hours. And then we came back to a second tone meeting and we went back from scratch over the whole thing. Yet. But it all worked brilliantly in the end. I think that just looks exactly it did also, right. We, we did also build a, a back panel of another car, which you sometimes yes. see immediately out the front of yeah, this car. Yeah. Um, yes. You see, is that with the exhaust and, and that had, out as well? Yes. And that had lights as well, to, which I, and it was on a kind of um, mm. pivot thing, so it could bob up and down as well. But it's funny because it's so easy to write this stuff. It's so easy to write and so hard to make because I think the script just says it's foggy outside. Yeah. And when you sit there with Ed, the designer, and, and with you lot having to design it, you're going, what does that mean? I don't, yeah. I mean, it this is where it, the mills mean, start, yeah. start helping us out geography wise as well. Because this, of course, I'm stepping out in a bit of studio with, I'll say it for you, Dave, with a, a, a bit of green screen around it. <laughs> And, Do you know what, Dave? Not this, bad. This comes back four months later. Not bad at all. Beautiful. Yeah, it looks nice, doesn't it? I mean, this is... Nice. No, that is... Come on, Houghton. Let go. Unleash your stays. <laughs> Beautiful. It's extraordinary. Because, I mean, I suppose Ooh. the whole the whole, oh, the whole episode is kind of set within the cars, really. Yes. Right? And then the, all the environment outside that you're kind of... Well, it, re- it really only comes alive when you see that. It, you suddenly get the geography of the situation they're in. Mm. And without that shot, I don't think it would quite make sense, this episode. I don't think you'd get it. No, not at all. No, I mean, no. those shots uh, we are absolutely essential. And that's what... That's what I wanted you to do was a story in which they're living inside mm. the CGI. Because mm. we, we always have brilliant CGI off you, mm. and you can do spaceships and... and Monsters, and we know that, but it was the ultimate integration of the whole thing, I <clears> thought, was to... Just, get, yeah. Those are the people, that is the story. You yeah, know, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. people, the sets are those little boxes. Yeah. And you need that objective view before you go into a second car, otherwise mm. maybe you would think it was the same one with a bit of set dressing. Which yes. of course it is. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It was a curious one to film from that point of view because obviously all the scenes with Ardle and Ardle Hanlon and Jennifer Hennessy here and myself, they were all filmed... Uh, consecutively, About three days. Then we'd go. They'd redress it. <laughs> like, the speaking cat. Talking cat. We, they'd redress it. They'd, they'd shoot all the scenes with uh, Lenora and Travis mm. and Freema. And so, uh, I, I don't think Freema ever met Ardle and Jennifer. No, uh, just at the read through. I think yeah, everyone yeah. was in little bog. The little Cassini sisters came in and did mm. their stuff on their own. And it's an odd shoot. It was just. It was un- strange, very unusual. Yeah. Sort of self-contained little dramas, isn't yeah. it? Mm. Right. It is. It, it's just. It's a very weird one. But and then uh, the mills work makes it work. You just bind it all together. Yeah. A great big visual. Mm. And look, and this is what I love about the, the five billion episodes. Every design department's at full tilt. I mean, because yeah. Brannigan is fantastic. He was based on in my head. I thought, do you remember that little cartoon cat? Uh, that head of an animated cat they used to present children's BBC. I can't remember his name. It was after your time, no. David. It was like. It was like in the earliest days of like lip syncing, not computer generated, but they had a cartoon head. What was he called? Chester or something. But he was a ginger cat with a flying helmet and goggles and a scarf. What era was this? Mm. Oh, it's probably when I was working in children's, like the early 90s or something. Oh, okay. So I probably wasn't watching up, children's. <laughs> yeah, and they had, and that's always stuck in my head. And really? that's, that's who Brannigan is. There we go. Ah. <laughs> The things he dreads. I mean, it does look like a recognisable image, and now you say that. I mean, I, th- mm. you know, it's, uh... I bet you have seen it. So there. Mm. Lovely cast here: Travis, Oliver, Lenora, Critchlow. They're just lovely, aren't they? It's just. I think they're great parts for actors, though, because because each of these cars is its own little mad world. Mm. It really gives you something to. And I think everybody in the episode does. They really kind of get their teeth into it, and yeah, you get a bit of a chance to shine, don't you? I suppose. Hard there. Hey, <laughs> well, like a nice waste products joke. <laughs> That'll do nicely. <laughs> and all written by a non-driver. Now I remember on that bit when I sonic the screen there. I remember with Richard Clark, the director, saying, "Why, why am I sonicking it? Because well, surely oh. that's going to come up anyway." But he was absolutely insistent. Oh, I suppose you're trying to get through a security layer. Well, I or guess so. Something. I'd never thought of that, but you're right. The fool. <laughs> the crazy fool. It does look really claustrophobic in there, doesn't it? You've got, I mean, all the it shots. Was, are, was uh, it? Kind of, <laughs> was it hot? It wasn't hot particularly, but it was, it was quite uncomfortable because, you know, I couldn't stand up straight. You know, it's, mm. it's lower, but it's great. It's what you need. Um, yeah, it's, it's what makes pokey. it work. Yeah. I worked with a lot of people. Jennifer Hennessy, who's Valerie, I worked with her. She was in The Second Coming. 
A lovely May sitting in the background of the Cassini. She was in a children's drama about years ago called Century Falls, Georgine Anderson. Ah. She's got a lovely voice, doesn't she? Mm. They're both of Cassinis are brilliant. Bridget as well. They were lovely, those women. Yeah. They loved it, actually. They, they love filming this. They had such a good time. They really got on with each other. They knew each uh, other of old. Right. And I think, oh, no, Bridget Turner's husband once directed Doctor Who. Oh, hello, fact mm. fans. No, she came up and said, Frank Cox who directed The Edge of Destruction, episode two, and The Censorites, episode five and six. And then, many years later, just after I'd graduated from drama school in about 1991, he turned me down for a job on Take the High Road. Frank! I mean, is the man crazy? <laughs> I'm surprised we employed the wife now, oh, I frankly. Know, I, I think we should go out but and CGI her out of the whole episode. For it's that. a sad ending. <laughs> 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 Look at that. The way the close-up bears on Ardler Handelman then for mm. the makeup it was such a defined picture. I just think it's brilliant. Every detail of the nose and everything. Mm. That's Neil Gorton's men. Hooray. Of course, we had to make the decision very early on to make all the cars had to be the same because ev- if every car had been different, that's like 10,000 more jobs for you. Yeah, no, it would have been a nightmare. Mm. But it fits the world, doesn't it? Yeah, and I, th- I think it would have been a problem for Ed as well, so... <laughs> So we, we knocked that on the head quite early on, didn't we? I think it was it was one of Will's flights of fancy actually that they because because the, the cars last year on New Earth were yeah. all different and none of us liked those cars too much. And but actually, I think I think the script says they're all the same because it's the uniformity of the world, isn't it? It's like these are just mm. like the working classes trapped away and um, in their little boxes, literally. Mm. Oh, it's all it's all worked out, you know. There's a lot of working out to do in this one as well, and the reasons why cars can't communicate with each other at certain times and with other oh, that, times. Oh, that drove people like Richard Clark mad, yeah. Cause it's right. Very, well, it's funny thing because they're cars, so we had this long argument where, a good argument, you know, where he was like saying, but there's only two people in the first scene, and later on the businessman mm. says, you can't lie to the computer. Mm. But I was going, that's what people are like with cars. Some people can fix their minometer, some people lie on their license, some people, some people have points in their license. It, every, just because it's a funny thing with science fiction drama, people think when, only in science fiction drama, people think when someone says something, that's an absolute fact. Right. Whereas if it's drama set in a pub and someone says, I'm going out with so and so tomorrow, people, you know, no, you're not, I don't believe you. You know, it's like, mm. it's only mm. science fiction, people think things have to be rock. They hard. take it all literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's weird because cars are like, everyone's different with their cars. People lie, they have. Do also steal them, all sorts of things. So it's just um, took a long time to get that through. Mm. What, what stage does a, does an infant cat develop the human side of its characteristic? Uh, a human Ten cat months. hybrid. Ten months. Ten months. Right. That's alarming. <laughs> fur is shed and yeah, all a little bit naked. It's going to get very tight in that car as well in ten months' time, isn't it? Imagine the birth. Because there's a I, well, imagine the ma- smell. Imagine the conception. <laughs> All of which would be beautiful and marvellous. It would be. <laughs> we, we, do, we do also have every form of sexuality. I think I'm allowed Quite to right. say that on a podcast here. Quite we right. have the Cassini sisters. And... I like that, but it was, so it should be. That's the future. Yes, isn't it? and the... Javits' car. Goodness knows what's what going on. What is going on in Javits' car? We have that yet to come. And yes. the lovely happy marriage of these two. Again, part of the whole point of this is that... Um, oh, we're coming to the hymn, aren't we? The, we um, are. It's a very Doctor Who thing, this, that... that you know, all, it's it's easy to write a dystopia, and and I remember when I first thought of this, thinking, oh, there'll be cannibals and pirates, and they'll be eating each other, and then you think those things only in order to get rid of them are come out the other end of what is a very Doctor Who story. And what I absolutely love about this is that they're not all killing each other in these cars, mm. and they live like this, and they survive, and they have hope, and mm. they have optimism, and that's why they end up singing a hymn because um, I think it's very human. I think the most appalling circumstances mm. people will. Well, they're breeding. They're, they're they're in a funny way. They're happy. They're um, like you could also argue that's their greatest downfall that they don't try to get out of that world. Well, and mm. and that's what's complicated about that moment, which mm. I think is why it works. Because it on on one hand, there's a wonderful kind of sense of community going on, which yes. is which is which gives you belief in the human spirit and and warms the cockles of your heart. At the other side, it's it, it, it's an opiate of the masses. And yes. I, I, and I remember we talked about because I think originally. The original stage direction was that the Doctor was moved by this, along with everybody else. A bit towards Valerie, because he right. was so rude to her. Yes. Do you know, he yes. actually upset But I remember her. we talked about whether yeah. that was right or not, and actually... No, you were right in it, because there was a stage direction just saying he 
puts his hand on her shoulder during mm. the hymn, and you brilliantly didn't want to. I, I, I absolutely agree now I watch it. Because, right. Because actually, you're right, this faith that they all have is brilliant and stops them all murdering each other and is fantastic. Equally, it stops anyone saying, what the hell is going yeah. on here? Yeah. And that's and the next and this him the him does change everyone. It makes Martha part of the world, and she joins in singing. It makes you, the Doctor, break the world mm. and start jumping from and defying the laws of physics and all the laws of gravity of the world by going from car to car to car, which no one's ever thought of doing. Mm. So, yes, it does both things happening mm. in, in opposite directions but, at the same time. It's very moving, though, as well. Look at them. I do think it's brilliant bit of writing, though, to put a hymn in Doctor Who, 7 o'clock on a Saturday night, and to <laughs> use it in this way. I, I can't so imagine good. anyone else would think of that. And I think it's a, a stroke of genius. I really do. Oh, thank you. You should have been my neighbours, because I bought this um, CD. <laughs> well, <laughs> male voice choir. <laughs> right, and when I'm writing that scene, I always, uh, if there's a bit of music that goes with the scene, I have to keep repeating it, repeating it. So I must have had the old rugged cross coming out of my house about a thousand <laughs> times. They're going, they're going, yeah, do we turn? <laughs> I knew they'd get him in the end. <laughs> But there it is, the Doctor's inspiration goes the opposite way. Mm. Dave, look at this. You're just magicians. Perfect. No, it's lovely this scene as well, isn't it? Because, again, you get to, to see the Doctor in the environment. And is that... You know, what I love about that car pulling up there, it's, it's the bobbing of it, the weight of it. And, mm. and someone just... Yeah, no, we, we put that in on purpose. Obviously. Yes, to, but to and someone... It's Anyways, someone's individual so. job to sit and gauge that and to say how much is that yeah, car weighing. Yeah, and yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. They, I mean, the, the whole scene was... Um, Supervised by a guy called Matt McKinney. Oh yeah, who uh, blind he, Matt? Who set, <laughs> blind Matt McKinney? Who set, who set up all the all the you know the, all the cars into the into the environment and Amazing. rendered it all out? Is he proud of it? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's a huge. I mean, it's, it was a big undertaking, I think, because it's because you're so marvellous. You lot, you never give anything away. Look at Dave, Poker Dave. <laughs> it's like force a smile out of him. Because if I'd done this, I'd be like, well, I'd just retire. <laughs> like, that's so brilliant. It is beautiful. Well, you challenge us every every week, Russell. Oh yes, <laughs> more to come. This is one of those episodes Lucky. where you know some episodes you kind of you kind of know what they're going to be like when you're shooting them. This mm. is so made by shots like that. Yes, that it's a, such a, such an exciting episode to see for the first time. Well, this little trilogy, all of those episodes are like that, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, that's the, true. The, um, that's end of the world. Oh, no, sorry. Oh, the, the five the, billion ones. Yes, yeah. they're all balmy, aren't they? They're all huge. I know, I think this will be the last one, sadly. Um, although we'll do futuristic ones. Mm. Again, we'll just go somewhere else. Mm. But I think nice That naked trilogy. couple kept getting put off. They came and got in their dressing gowns about four <laughs> times and kept getting sent home because we didn't get to them. In fact, I think naked women got recast because she couldn't make it the day really? we finally we, we were finally going to show her stuff. Not, not at all. She was, I'm sure she was beautifully naked, but she was <laughs> Well, you can um, see, you can see her, little, her little costume, actually, if you look carefully. We were, oh, really? Oh, we, you were, we, oh, I see. We were, you were pausing the DVD, <laughs> right? You had a good old look. We were, all, we were all going for it, you know, just on a grading technical. Purely thing. professional. Yeah. You were freeze-framing Javit. <laughs> You're not fooling me. Because <laughs> here she comes. Javit's coming up. <laughs> Everyone's favourite character in Gridlock. With the odd cars that you find here, there's um, we're now coming up to a leather cat and her two vessel virgins. <laughs> <laughs> She's called Javit, by the way. I don't know if you ever get that from the dialogue, but there she yes, is. Yes, she is. What do you call her, Dave? Uh, it's Teen Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Good. What is going on in that car, though? They're just mad, aren't they? Yeah. The, the vessel virgins look like they're chained together as well to me. They probably are. Yeah. Who do you think they are? I do remember mentioning... No, I think they've just they're just clinging to each other for warmth. Robes sort of thing. Javits and Leather, he keeps it cold in there. <laughs> he, she keeps it cold. She, <laughs> Daisy Lewis. Great performance, isn't it? Yeah. Screaming away. Because what is hard about this is that we sit here talking about the cars and what is really hard for you, Dave, is, and for all of us, is keeping down the number of shots. Because if we had millions, my God, you'd see this motorway, you'd see Javits' car being opened now by mm, big mm, claws and mm. things like that, and you have to count every single one. You do. I mean, but you also, I mean, you you know, you you only need to see it a certain amount of times to believe you're there, don't you? I mean, yes. you, you don't need to see it um, a, a million times. Yeah, it makes you creative at the same time. Nicholas Bolton. He's the business great, man. He? Love him. Business, yeah. yeah. He does it brilliantly. Straight out of Magritte. <laughs> it's not. It's Judge Dredd used to have an informer called Max. I'm sure it's Max Normal. 
who oh, in the yeah, middle yeah, of yeah, yeah. Mega City One, where everyone's absolutely crazy and balmy, he wore a pinstripe suit and a bowler hat, carried ah. an umbrella as a proper businessman. So this is an homage. Tribute. An homage. I'd probably be sued by rebellion <laughs> or something. Now oh, here they come. Marvelous. Not seen since 1966. How marvellous. It was very exciting. I remember you mentioning this to me in the series two that all oh, went bringing back the Mac. Really. Yes, we talked about mm. it ages ago. Mm. It was um, next first... year. The Monoids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obscure Doctor Who number three. <laughs> Although apt, you know, because they're in a they're in oh, yeah. underworld and they're yeah. kind of in a smoky environment. I guess you've. Uh... I'll tell you where they came from. It was the originally this city was going to have three levels. It was going to be the over city where everyone was alive. Oh, I remember that. Then version, the motorway. Yeah. And then the sea, and the Doctor was going to literally break the rules of the world by going down all three layers to the sea weather. And I thought, oh, sea monsters, oh, macro, that could be marvellous. And then the sea disappeared because the idea of the motorway just became so exciting. But then I remember thinking, oh, no, but they didn't live in the water. They lived off gas, so I can still have crabs down there. Yeah. Hooray! Mm. The moment I realised I could still have crabs was brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> or indeed tulips, as they are there. <laughs> <laughs> The attack of the deadly tulip, and I love it. I mean, I literally wanted this. We wanted this to be a roller coaster ride. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we're always saying that about action sequences, but this is literally. Well, it's, it's difficult to do. You have to. I mean, you have to do it completely CG because as soon as you start involving any kind of real, oh yeah, elements, you're yeah, just, you've got such a. When they build the Doctor Who Park, mm. this will be it. This will be it. Crab ride. <laughs> It'll just be marvelous. Thrills with a macro. Look at them pushing through the tulips. It's marvellous. I find that hard to watch without moving my head from side <laughs> to side. <laughs> because these three are acting their hearts out. Yeah. Just, do you remember we, dis- match, and I think we discussed building these sets on tyres and things so they could <laughs> move? We do that every series <laughs> and we never, ever do. One day. My last Full credit to, to Richard Clark though, for the oh. director for meshing all this together. Yes. Very and making all these very disparate worlds seem like they're all part of the same one. Very, and he worked yeah. very hard on the effects of you. I think he drove you by me at times, uh, uh, but well, in a good way, like uh, a director should. Doesn't yeah, no, it? no, um, he he knew what he wanted. It's for... yeah. Julie found him on Life on Mars, I think, wasn't that? That's where, right. Where, where, where we sourced Richard from? Yep. And lovely Jane Featherstone off that said he was brilliant, and that's all we needed. Mm-hmm. Word from her. And he had a great pair. He, he's done this, and he does the forthcoming episode six. That I think we can say on a podcast like this has got one of the best monsters ever in the world. No, it's fantastic. No, I haven't seen it. Oh, it's ah gobsmacking! <laughs> Absolutely gobsmacking. That shot then of the macro uh, that that was uh, this was added on very very last minute because we never actually had a clear shot of the macro. Right there, it, it, they, they were just sort of strange tulipy claws and. That just makes you... No, 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 I was. I kind of wanted to put a shot in like that, but because, because we were kind of limited to yes. a, a, as it was a POV shot. And we ran out of money, to be honest. Uh, yeah, no, as usual, um, we have those sort of... And the lovely Phil Connison, the best producer in the world, begged and scraped that money together for that shot, which ah. is, you know, he did, and, <laughs> and, and probably not as much as you wanted either, but um, it works in the end. We haven't said a word about... Anna Hope, Hope is back. Novice Haim is Hooray. back. Hooray. She charmed us all with her brilliant performance last year. It's that voice. It's so great it? to see her back again, yeah. Well, and the acting, it's everything. I yeah. think she's... It's like we knew when we did New Earth last year. We just said, let's go back. Right. It? It's just we loved her. Absolutely loved her. We've got two out of three non, cat non nurses back this year with Adjua Ando. Uh, <laughs> now Son's furry face. We'll get Donna Kroll back in yeah. somehow. The power of Kroll. Look at, look at the businessman there. The I just, the he's background. upstaging you madly. I think he may be stealing the scene. <laughs> I think he might he, have to have a word. I think he's doing it brilliantly. Uh, we'll edit him out for the DVD. But his face now is fantastic. <laughs> look at him. <laughs> Bless the businessman. <laughs> now, this is the Temple of Peace where the episode at The End of the World was filmed. Which has a certain uh, symmetry to it, I suppose. Well, we worried about that for a long time. We thought, well, we're repeating a location. But then we said, look, that was in the year of five billion. Yeah. There's got to be a certain amount of architecture. Same architecture. Similarity. Yeah. yeah. And actually, you don't see enough of it no. to really register Do you know, that. I think I'd never have noticed. so dark, apart from anything else. No. Dave, talk us through this beautiful shot. Yeah, this is a two and a half D matte painting, which means... Uh, it's essentially a painting that's been projected on some 3D geometry so that we can oh. put a little camera move on it so you get a sense that it's not just a flat painting. 
Ah, a sense of ah, move around it a little bit. That, well, yeah, and no, I mean, it's 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 relatively simple. You kind of you build in the computer, you build the kind of three D, sh- rough three D shapes of the within the shot, like yeah. with the, the benches and ha- what have you, and then you literally just project like a projector on top of that the map painting. And then you, how does the map painting move then? Yeah, uh, because it's on. It's on, it, it's kind of sticks to the kind of three D the three D area the oh, the three right. D model that you've uh, built, and then you have to then you move your camera around it, and you can uh, you, you, and it works. Mm. It does <laughs> <laughs> indubitably. Yeah, been a godsend. All these New York City yeah. shots have had it's, that it's, on it, didn't they? It's oh. it's something we sort of did in. Um, Empty Child for the Blitz stuff, and you know it's, it's relatively. T- As Rose thing. passes over buildings like St Paul's, mm, that is, yeah. you can see them move underneath, and that was the and first time. Yeah, we're just trying to get a bit more of that in to give them the paintings a bit of life. Oh, love it! Absolutely, more you can do. Face of Boharay. There he is. Beautiful. It's true and Roger as his voice. Mm. The face of Rose's last appearance. Sadly. But he's a beautiful creation, that thing. Look at those eyes, they're just expressive and brilliant. What's he like to act with? (laughs) (laughs) Surprisingly expressive. Is he? Well, it moves and it twitches away and... (laughs) Easier than CG, I should imagine. He's a big... Well, he's a big old prop. His brow just gently... Undulates and it's, it's quite alive, funnily enough. Yeah, I just love him because he's just one of those things that took off. He was just a prop yeah. in the end of the world and a bit of a gag. And then they spent so much money on him. I thought, well, we better bring that back because we yeah. hardly used it. And then, so you hadn't foreseen his future it, at the it, time. Well, you always have little no, but then I was asked to write. There's a Doctor Who book called one of those BBC books called Enemies and Aliens or, or something, and. Um, and they asked me to write a little bit of a history of the face of Bo. I got quite carried away, and I, and I wrote all this stuff saying, oh, he's a traveller, he's lived for billions of years, and one day there'll be a great secret. And funnily enough, I wrote in that, when the, the, the face of Bo, when, when the face of Bo dies, the sky will crack open, as indeed it does. Indeed uh, it which does. is like two years ago, and I, and I didn't really have this story worked out. And then I'd forgotten that until someone pointed out the other day. It's weird, isn't it? It's all sort of... Small it's acorns. All, small mm. acorn stuff. <laughs> it's all... So the sky cracking open is... Is an unintentional. Um... No, I didn't remember I'd written that. And then the man who published it, who, who's read the script, sort of um, emailed me. Justin Richards off off the books emailed me a few weeks ago saying, "Oh look, it said that. It said like I'd worked it out all in advance. Saying look, the sky will crack yes. open. Aren't you clever?" I he was saying, you had. "No, no, I thought, oh my god, that's weird. Wow. Isn't that strange? Although it must have been in my head somewhere. Equally. Yeah, but um, but then you wouldn't invent a whole motorway around that. A motorway <laughs> tunnel, it has to be said." Hooray for these scenes that mean we can afford all your stuff, Dave. Yeah. <laughs> In every adventure, there will be scenes of three or four minutes in which they sit down and talk. In close-up. Yeah, In but close-up. it's important. I mean, it doesn't... It oh, doesn't it I mean, it, this all contributes to where Martha's come from and, and where she's going. Yeah. I think the one shot that Richard Clark and I actually wanted here was that effect shot of it suspended in the fog above the macro with its lights off. Uh, that would have been nice. Uh, just at the top of the scene or halfway through, mm. just said to have seen macro shifting slowly underneath it and things like that. I know he's heartbroken because at one point we did have that shot in and we had to lose it for something else. So When we were with our interminable lists. Well, it's faith again. Look, her faith in the Doctor gives him faith to yeah. drive. Yeah. It's like that they've just got to try. Oof, and off they go Ray. on the Doctor Who ride. <laughs> <laughs> Roll up. <laughs> Got to be taller than this line in order to go, <laughs> go on. <laughs> How marvellous that you were playing with wires and switches. <laughs> you think, oh, here we go again. Well, you do find new ways of uh, fiddling with things. <laughs> And they're always great, at these scenes, because, they, you yes. know, you take those turning points, the points where the, where the Doctor just is invigorated and, and, and starts to fly. Oh, he takes control. Yeah. I know, it's and I th- what's lovely about this one, of course, is just when you think he's sorted out, it all goes wrong. <laughs> oh, there go the tulips. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. Look at this, Dave. It's marvellous. 
That was one of the only times we actually sort of see out the window, wasn't it? We see, uh, we had a green screen window. Right. Oh, you just oh, said green it. screen. Oh, oh Dave. <laughs> that means I'm not going to give you a ten in there. <laughs> oh, and the face of Bo gives his last. Squeezing it out. Oh, building up his part of tree. Bless him. Though. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> you big you old, old face. <laughs> My favourite line, I think, from last year was, do you remember the face of Bowie? Yes, of course. How is the old boat race? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Billy <said> that. <laughs> oh, look, now we're getting truly religious with our imagery. The light. Religious in a good way, though. Fundamental. There is something, yes, there is a real... Bringing of light. Bringing of light, the use of the hems, all that. There'll be letters. Ah, oh, but the doctor's behind it all. That's what I love. It's fine. Bless him. Because all these actors, you know, this would have been probably the last bit they all did in their various sets on their own. Yes. Um, all glad to be going. <laughs> Get me out of but this it, box. It, it all knits together perfectly. <laughs> Sally Calypso, of course. It was. Do you know the Halo Jones comic strip yeah, as well? The was... newsreader on that, I think she's called Swifty Frisco, mm. who turns out to be just an automated voice and I think that that's all set in a big futuristic city I didn't nick it I homaged it I, also, also the macro terror as well that's they have, that kind of a oh that, yes that the, has the, the president he bloke or whatever he is oh look if we were watching properly we'd be crying now <laughs> we've got to clear that motorway that one line there was it added afterwards I guess it's just an extra bit of Yes. Explanation to, to to nail exactly what had happened but you you've know. got access above it's yeah. like because what's not quite clear is the is that your computer locks, your wheel locks, and that's why they can't fly above the macro. Right. And so the layers have to be clear. You know, they could have just barge into other cars, couldn't they, and forced mm. their way up, but they literally cannot fly higher than the fast lane. So he's given them access above. Oh, again, it all I makes sense. Th- <clears throat> I way. think those pictures absolutely tell that story. Mm. <clears throat> Lovely Freeman acting there, bless her. I mean, how hard to sit in a box in a Cardiff studio and hug like your whole life has been changed. And they do it brilliantly, yeah, don't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You actors, I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Look at them, it's brilliant. I'm really with no idea of what's going on around them. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can stitch us up <laughs> so badly. <laughs> We're going to put a troop of clowns yeah. outside. <laughs> <laughs> don't we there. Again, shots I wish we had. I wish we'd I had him. I just love it. Wow. amazing? But I wish we'd seen the city empty. That's the one shot we couldn't afford as well, before the cars yeah, went back. Yeah. Should, when she says the city's dead. Ah. We, we did it originally in the first draft of the script, and it was just the one shot we had to cut of saying, look, it's dead. Mm. There's nothing out there. That crack is from the mill as well, of course, isn't oh, it? Oh, yes. I mean, look at that. That's a, that's a painting, and it's moving. Brilliant. Done by uh, Simon Wicker, who's our, our new map painter. Just a genius. It's just... Because it, that looks like a model shot to me, or whatever, or a fully mm. rendered city. Or, yeah. Or I mean, not. it is a kind of a model. I mean, it's a sort of semi... Computer generated model. Modelish. Modelish with a painting. It's a 3D computer model rather than a miniature model. Yes, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Of course, we added this land in ADR now, where. Oh, yes, about. You say. That line is the same. She's a cat, don't worry. Because it only struck me afterwards that she she doesn't matter as a meta cat. She's not going, oh my god, that woman's a cat! That's true. I mean, you. It's a tricky one because the doctor doesn't know she hasn't met a cat. That's true. Although it did see Milo and Jean. Yeah, yeah. But it was just at the last minute, I thought. Mm. And it's a script fault, because Martha never goes, Oh, cat! <laughs> a big face, cat, cat, yeah. big face! Who would you react to first? <laughs> <laughs> so I gave you that line in the ADR. Thank you, David. <laughs> Saved my bacon. Something they wouldn't necessarily have uh, worried about in the original series. <laughs> now they'll worry all day. Poor Bo. The dogs are scared of hearing it, I think. Mm. And Freeman does give Payne a good look there, actually. Like, like, oh, I'm looking at a cat. How weird. You texted me on this day to say how sad it was. It was. It's... Peculiarly sad. Yeah. St- all sitting around this big rubber face dying. Um, <laughs> and, of course, the voice, you know, is being read in by the first assistant director. That, none, of that, none of that's there either. But yeah. there's something... I think it's because of the way he just... Beautifully moves, very subtly, this big old rubber face. Yes. It, it suddenly takes on a... And, of course, what he's saying and... and Oh, yeah. What one, 
knows that symbolises. Yes. Yeah. I think Murray's music is so clever here because every other composer in the world would have sad violins playing now. And he gives the energy. It's starting to get livelier. Because mm. the Doctor's head, it's like he's, like he's always more or less inside the Doctor's head, I think, Murray. Yeah. And so there is sad. You've got that, those chords playing away. But listen to it. It's fast and big. It's just clever. Like the most astonishing yes, things are happening. True. And he's denying Of course, he's fighting them. Yeah. Because he's saying, yeah. oh, oh, was wrong. Is he wrong? We shall see. Well, he's not. Maybe he's not wrong, but he's not entirely right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. And the streets closed down just like he said. Yeah. Didn't have to do anything. Yeah. They just ran for the hills. He's a clever old doctor. Yeah. I think they've all gone upstairs. Imagine the party that's oh, going can on. Can you big, imagine? Big empty city. I love that flat. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> that grabbing oh, yeah, houses. all those posh buildings that are empty. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just clear out the skeletons and go on. In fact, there should be skeletons raining down <laughs> on <laughs> Doctor and Martha now. I do love that bit where he says it's not you. She yeah. says it's me. He's so accidentally rude to her all the time. Yeah. That is, that is a constant Martha thing that she is devoted to him. She absolutely loves him and he doesn't quite get it, does he? Doesn't quite click. She forces his hand, though, and mm. she does that time and again as well. It's, it, she she yes. forces him to uncover stuff. She, she, and she's got, in a way that Rose would, would never have done, I think. She's, no. She's, she's got an obstinacy. Oh, she stands her ground. Yeah, absolutely. yeah. Or sits her ground in this example. Which I think the Doctor absolutely admires in her as well. Oh, loves it, absolutely. And here's Abide With Me, mm. which I just think is one of the most beautiful songs ever written. We played a long time with this. There was Murray actually wrote a hymn for this with a choir, which was wordless. It was sort of shifting chords. And I would always choose Murray's music any day of the week. But um, it had the very odd effect of making it sound, feel as though Martha the Doctor could hear the incidental music because it was the same orchestration, <laughs> the same chords, the same choir. So it made me burst out laughing. Right. And when, at the saddest moment of the whole episode, I was hooting. Uh, so we went back to Abide With Me, which I think just carries a hundred years of history with it for us. And mm. the thought that it's survived to the year five billion is mm. even more beautiful. I'm talking over your lovely acting because it's well, so easy to stop and watch this. Scene. Everyone's seen it already. Yes. Unless, like to think unless you're are, watching it with commentary for the first time. I like to think they exist. <laughs> <people>. <laughs> the perverse ones, I call them. It's just beautiful, David, and you are magnificent. So well, it's a beautifully written scene, though. Wow. You know. Dave, you're rubbish. You did yeah, nothing. Well, yeah, what did you do on that? On oh, actually, you've got a shot coming up that's quite good. Actually, there yeah. Yeah. You win in the end. <laughs> yeah, you do. You get to upstage both of us in the last second. And I was so pleased by this, because it's like, because although there's a great joy in restating the bit, there's a great rejoice in restating the basics of the series, but this is more like backstory. And I was very worried. This is stuff that we've never, that the Doctor Who's never really done before. No. He, although in the, in the old series he used to go back to Gallifrey, this is the Doctor going back to childhood. And, yes. And, and, and things that, that... John Pertwee would do it. You know, the, I yeah, OK, yeah, yeah, hill. that's true. I decided not to write about that. <laughs> 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 but, um, oh, and here we go. This is, but it's, it's just... It's a new approach to Gallifrey, and well, no, it's a, it's I don't know, it's partly new, it's partly traditional, but um, and oh, Dave, this yeah, shot, look at this, I just think it is so amazing. And the hymn swells. I mean, it's in the BBC One trailer, this shot, and I almost said, can you take it out because it's such a beautiful ending? But then you thought, how can you not show it off? Yeah, yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Thank you, everybody. Oh, next and, week, uh, next week, New York. And they were they there? Did you really go to New York, David? I didn't. Everybody else did. <laughs> Let's not give anything away. I was filming episode six at the time. Don't spoil it for people. I think. Oh, you yeah, I was really in New went. York. <laughs> I went to New York in 1930, obviously. <laughs> um, you really great story coming up. Great story. Some great guest performances as well. Miranda, Miranda Ray's Ray's brilliant. Yes. Hugh Quarsh yeah. brilliant. Ryan Carnes. Um, brilliant. Andrew Garfield, a really good guest cast and a yes. great. Um, and Daleks. Heck? And some Daleks. Right. <laughs> you can't really. Like you've never seen them before. Yes, quite. Very quite. exciting. Hooray yeah, for that episode! Next week for Daleks. But um, <laughs> thank you, Russell, for that that script because it's a. It, no. I think it's a really special. Thank you, one. Dave, as well. We all love that one. We all had a good time. Everyone worked very mm. hard on it. Mm. And that's goodbye, I think, to the O five billion. Yes, well, forever. I think so. I think until I change my mind. Trilogy, Bo dead. Move on. Mm. 
Well, let's see. Still do futuristic ones and alien planets and things, but um, I think that's just set the seal on that. I'm not sure you topped that one there, actually, so done. Yeah. Hey ho. And goodbye to the Macra for another 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Back in their box. Next week, the mandrels. <laughs> Good, goodbye, viewers. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs>